Hello everyone, I am Camila Calife and I have been in the coffee industry for about eight years now. I started as a barista and a coffee educator and now I am more focused on the quality side. I am very passionate about flavors and aromas and the way coffee cupping connects you with your senses. I am a Q grader and also a WBC sensory judge. Uh, I am from and currently based in Ecuador, where I am the founder of Botanica, which started as a coffee shop and now has grown into a training center and a quality lab where we provide independent services. I am today with Leaderboard as your origin coach. I will try to tell you a few things about Ecuador that may help you identify Ecuadorian coffees this season. So Ecuador is a fairly small country. It's just a bit larger than the state of New York, so you can have an idea, but it has an amazing diversity of ecosystems and in almost all of them, coffee is grown. In fact, it is one of the few countries where both Arabica and Robusta are grown. But since I am not an expert in Robusta, I will focus on Arabica today. The regions where coffee is grown in Ecuador are the Amazon forest, the Andes, both north and south of the mountain range, the coastal region, and also the Galapagos Islands. And each one of them has very different characteristics, so the coffee profile may vary depending on where the coffee was grown. In regions where we find high moisture levels, the drying process may be a challenge, and doing naturals and honeys may not always be the best idea, for there's a higher risk of having defects related to the drying process, such as mold or phenol. This would be the case of the Amazon, the northern part of the Andes, and Galapagos. Whereas in the south, a less humid environment helps in the drying process of honeys and naturals. So it would be fair to say that it is more common to find washed coffees in the north and more naturals in the south. In Galapagos, producers have, made, have faced many drying challenges, but they have managed to improve their techniques. So now we can say that Galapagos is way more than an exotic origin. Now, let's talk a bit about varieties. In Ecuador, there's a very interesting range of varietals that are grown in the coffee regions I mentioned before. Caturra, Tipica and Bourbon have been historically very popular, but in the last 10 years or so, there are two varieties that have stand out for their high potential, Sidra and Tipica Mejorada. Have you heard of them? I'm sure you have, for they are considered the Ecuadorian flagship varieties. Here, we can have a look at both varieties. This one is the Tipica Mejorado, and this one is the Sidra. As you can see, they are different in shape and size. The Sidra is a bit larger. The difference in color comes from the process. This one is a washed coffee and this one is honey processed. As you already probably know, a coffee flavor profile is determined by many different factors, such as variety, soil, the altitude where the coffee is grown, and of course, fermentation and drying processes. So it may be kind of hard to try and determine a single profile for such a varied origin. Nevertheless, when I think of Ecuador, sweet and fruity are definitely words that come to my mind. Ecuadorian coffee has a very pleasant acidity, followed by high sweetness. Brown sugar, panela, honey are words I usually use to describe this sweetness. In terms of fragrance and flavor notes, um, fruits are often found. Depending on the process, they can be on the citrus side, such as lime or tangerine, or more in the berries world, such as blackberry or blueberries. 
Other flavors that are usually found are spices like vanilla or allspice, just like in a cooked fruit dessert. I hope you find this information useful and if you have the chance, get to explore all the possibilities that Ecuadorian coffee has to offer. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out by mail or you can also find me on Instagram as Concara de Café. Please enjoy all the leaderboard coffees and have fun 